Welcome to Keep It Pro Training Call, brought to you by Networking Wisdom, featuring Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Monique, and I have the honor and privilege of introducing Ramacio, the creator of Networking Wisdom, and the reason for this call each and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for almost five years. On this call, you will learn the skills to be successful in network marketing and in life. Ramacio Fulcher is a well-respected international leader, trainer, coach, and much sought-after mentor. He is a highly successful entrepreneur with 750,000 people globally in his network, and he's accomplished over $1 billion in sales. At the tender age of just 25 years young, Ramacio earned his first million dollars in the mortgage and real estate industry shortly after he was introduced to network marketing. Ramacio enjoys having fun and sharing his wisdom worldwide. He is a millionaire mentor, leader of leaders, and coach of coaches. As a top leader and a top earner, he's also a top 50 worldwide earner in MLM. This man knows how to make money, and he knows how to make money fast. What we all like most about him is his love for God and for mankind. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to some and present to others our mentor and our friend, the California kid, also known as a marketplace minister, Mr. Ramacio A. Fulcher. Ramacio, have you joined us? Absolutely. I am here. Can you hear me, Momo? Loud and clear. Welcome. All righty. Thank you so much for doing what you always do for us. You help us out, and be our, and you're always our gracious host. We really appreciate you and all the contribution that you've made throughout the years. Ladies and gentlemen, I am excited to be back here with all of you again. If this is your first time, welcome. As they say, come one, come all. We have been doing this call for now a little over four and a half years. Wow, to God be the glory. You know, we've been doing this call. And for those of you that have been invited here, maybe this is your first time. Maybe you're back and you're somebody that stays with us throughout the years. Let me express to you what this call really is about and what you can get from it. This call is done for two purposes. One, we are going to teach you the specific skills that you need to get yourself to the top of whatever business that you are promoting. So, yes, being on this call, uh, my prayer, my hope, is that you do have an entrepreneurial bone left in your body. Uh, we want to teach you how, the specific skills that you need. Underline the word specific skills that you need to get yourself to the top of whatever company you're promoting. The second thing that we teach you is we teach you life skills. You're going to find that as you walk and, and as you go forward in your journey, as you grow as a person, everything else around you will grow. Think about it. Maybe you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old today, and just think about all the growth that's happening in your life. Uh, you know, I know, you know, when I was, I'm 43, and I know some of the things that I like now I didn't like those things literally, you know, you know, 20 years ago. I wasn't a fan of broccoli. Let's give you an example. You know, so in other words, as you grow, everything around you grows. So what's the message there before we dive into today's topic? Everything is a reflection of you, your business, your hygiene, your standards. It all starts with you. So a lot of times we as entrepreneurs and leaders and, and builders – we all want to know, what do I have to do to get the thing that I'm after? You know, the young man or the young woman trying to climb the hill of success is forever plagued with, what's my next step, right? What do I need to do to gain more money? What do I need to do to get to the next rank in the company that I'm with? What do I need to do to close the deal, right? Right? And that's always, I mean, come on, that's just, that's very logical. It's very, you know, it's very logical, and it's also very, um, uh, organizational in terms of what's my next step. That's pretty common what we all do. But what I want to challenge you, if you're going to be here with us today, maybe you're listening live, maybe you're listening to the replay, maybe you, maybe you bumped into us on our YouTube channel. I don't know. But what, wherever you are, I want you to concentrate on the message here today. What we're saying is that everything is a reflection of you. 
I'm not saying don't put time into growing your skills. Ladies and gentlemen, you will need to put an enormous amount of time and energy into growing your skills. Yes, you will. So write that down. But you know what you need to put more time into is growing yourself. You know what I found? It's more complicated for people to grow themselves than it is to grow their skills. Give me an example. Let's say if I'm trying to become, uh, I'm trying to become a person that cuts down trees. Well, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go sign up for a course and learn how to cut down trees. And they're going to tell me what type of saw I need, what type of materials I need, what type of axe or whatever I need, and I'm going to start working on chopping down trees, right? So it's very specific on what I need to do to get better at cutting down trees. But when you think about your life, you know, write this down. Everywhere you go, there you are. In other words, you go with you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, you're there. <laughs> so what does this mean? It means this, ladies and gentlemen. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. Let me say it again. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. I'm going to say it one more time for the people in the back. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. Now let that soak in. Process that. So what are we saying here? What we're saying here is you, everything around you is a reflection of you. So I want you to spend more time working on you than you do working on it. Now that's profound. I'm telling you guys, I'm 43, and what I just said, I say, I'd say, let me put it to you like this. About 85% of what I just said, I understand. <laughs> About 85% of what I just said, I understand. What do you mean? Well, because, let me say it again. Wherever you go, there you are. Put more energy, put more emphasis, put more effort into growing you versus growing it. See, it's not natural for most of us to spend our time trying to grow ourselves because it's like it, it, it's so big, it's so, compli it's so complex. Where do I start? Where do I go? Who do I listen to? It's just, it's what do you mean, right? It, it's not as specific, right? And so it's hard to get your, your arms around, well what, 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 well, what do you mean grow me? Well, what? That sounds very esoteric, right? It's not as specific as the example that I gave in tree cutting. So when things aren't so specific, what happens is people don't tend to focus on them. But you cannot deny that everywhere you go, there you are. You bring you, your perspectives. You bring you, your habits. You bring you, your disposition. You bring you, your skill set. You bring you, your mindset. You bring you, everything about you goes with you into that next relationship, goes with you into that next business, that next job. It just goes with you. So that's why I'm so grateful to this call because the concentration and the focus of this call is on you. We're going to really center in, dive in like we've been doing for four and a half years, and we're going to help build you. That's what we're going to do. And that's what we've been doing. And so I'm really excited about it. It's called networking wisdom. You know, wisdom, wisdom is the most important thing in life. You know, wisdom, with, wisdom is the principal thing, says the scripture, right? So everything is about what you should be wanting. Yes, I'm going to say it for all of you. What you should be wanting more of is more wisdom. Now, when I said a minute ago that even though I made the statement that <clears> – <throat> Eight, that when I made the statement and I said I understood 85% of it, what I was saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, is just because you hear something and you say something over and over and over and over again, you can't really count it as you can't really count it as you know it, or maybe you know it, but do you do it? Do you do it? Do you do it? Do you spend more time working on you, or do you spend more time working on your craft? Do you spend more time working on it? I want to challenge you today to take some of the pressure off of it and put the pressure onto you. What does that mean? It simply means I want to talk about the theme of today's call in just a minute. 
begin to focus more on you. And that's what we're talking about here, your relationship with your creator, with God. We're talking about trying to be more righteous in your endeavors. You'll never be perfect. Trust me. I'm not perfect and neither are you, so forget about it, right? But you can strive to be more righteous. You can strive to be kinder. You can strive to have better habits. You can strive, right? You can. You can, tri- you can strive to learn how to go through the, va- the peaks and the valleys of life, okay? These things build character. I love how, how my boy Les Brown says it. He says, when times are good, put it in your pocket. But when times are lean, put it in your heart. You see what I'm saying? Lean times build character. You certainly don't build much character when you're on top of the mountain, but it's in the valleys that you go through, the struggles of the broken relationship or the frustration of waiting for a promotion. It's in those times, believe it or not, when your focus is, when is this going to be over? But little did you not know that was by God's design. You're building more character. You're building more character. So with that being said, I want to, I want to conclude this part before we transition. Spend more time working on you. And instead of you trying to figure it out, show up here on Sundays. Show up here on Sundays. And I promise you, I promise you, you will be over full in terms of what you get fed here on this call. It's absolutely free. You don't owe us anything. All we would ask you to do is actually join our philosophy. We believe what we make happen for others, God will gladly make happen for us. And so what's that mean? Share this call with somebody. Tell a friend. Tell somebody, hey, man, you need to jump on this thing. Every Sunday to get to listen to somebody who's done over a billion dollars in sales, now look, I can't take the credit. I can't take the credit. I'm just playing in the movie that God is orchestrating. But I'm certainly doing a good job playing my role. I'll tell you that much, right? Okay. I don't know everything. But somewhere, some time ago, some four years ago, it was, it was placed in my heart from God that this is what I want you to do. And I'm like, okay, so you want me to get on here and you want me to share the wisdom that I've accumulated from various mentors, trials and errors, trials and tribulations, highs and lows. You want me to share that. But, Lord, who am I really sharing it with? I don't even know these people. Well, see, part of being obedient, write that down. Oh, that's a big word. That's a big word for this year, actually. All of us need that one right there. Part of being obedient is you don't necessarily understand why something is being told for you to do. See, God has, he, he has all the wisdom. He knows, he knows, you know, the left from the right. He knows before you ever even think it. He already knows. But when you are obedient, you know that the plan that God has for you, his plans are for you to prosper both in health and in wealth. So God means nothing but good for you, even if you don't necessarily believe in God. You still are his child. And part of being his child, he wants nothing but good things for you. And you can take that to the bank. That check will cash seven days a week. All right? So what we're saying here, let's dive into the topic that I'm eager to get to here today, and that is the theme of today's call is push until. P-U-S-H until. That's right. We're going to talk about this today. We're going to talk about pushing. This, this call right now, this message is aimed for all my builders out there. That's right. I'm talking to that girl, that woman, that little boy, or that man. And you've got purpose in you. You've got got something you're involved in right now. I don't know what it is. I I don't know if you're determined to get married and you're going to find Mrs. Wright. You ain't going to stop until you get get it right. I don't know if you're on the gurney, if you're on the, on the labor table right now, and you're, and you're pregnant right now, and you're in your final, tri, uh, uh, final trimester, and you just can't take the pain. And, and you, 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 listen, I'm talking to you right now. Push until. If you're the guy that's the, the entrepreneur that keeps trying this business and that business and this and this and that, and it just still hasn't happened for you yet, I'm talking to you today. Push until. If you are a parent that's just got the child that's just so disobedient. It seems like every time you try and talk to her and you try and teach them, they just don't listen to you. Push until if you're the person that's trying to get closer in your spirituality and you were raised and you don't know what to listen to. Should I listen to the Catholic tradition? Should I listen to the, uh, the Baptist tradition? Should I listen to Methodist? Should I listen to AME? Should I listen to Pentecostal? I'm confused. Push until. Oh, I got a special word for you today. 
we're gonna talk, I'm talking to all of my builders out there. And again, I'm not just talking about people building for financial gain. I'm talking about building for anything. This, this message today is specifically targeted and aimed at the builders. I want you to repeat after me. I am a builder. I say it again. Come on, come on, say it, come on, say it. Say it. I want to hear you say it. <laughs> I am a builder. I'm a builder. Say it. Say it like you mean it. Come on. Come on, all my men out there. Put some bass in your voice. I am a builder. Come on, ladies. Come on, join in. Say it. Come on, God said you were supposed to be the help, mate. Come on. I want to hear you say it. You building too. You building a family. You building your business. Come on. Talk, woman. Talk to me. Who are you? I'm a builder. Say it. So this call today is aimed for all of my builders out there, regardless of your race, regardless of your age, regardless of where you live in the world. This call is for you. We're talking about we're talking to the builders out there. Push until is the theme of this actual message. I want you to re-listen to this. I promise it's going to be simple, but it's going to be profound. I want to always start off with the scripture. I like to take all of my reference points. I like to always speak from truth. And the truth is in the good book, the Bible. That's right. So what we're going to do, I want to give you the scripture first, and then I'm going to go ahead and elaborate on the message and then show you how this is applicable to you right now today. And I got to tell you, this particular message, man, it gets me fired up. It really does. So if I come across passionate and enthusiastic, just, 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 just enjoy it, okay? Because it's just, you know, you know when I'm feeling something. You can tell. I'm as authentic as it gets. <laughs> so if I'm feeling it, you're going to know. And likewise, if I'm not feeling it, you're going to know that too. So, all right, the scripture that we're coming to you today from is, right, grab a pen, write this down, First Kings. First, it's in the book of First Kings, okay? First Kings, and we're coming from the 18th chapter, the 41st verse through 45. One more time. First Kings, 18th chapter, 41st verse through the 45th verse. That's where we're at. No, I'm not a pastor, but yes, I do believe in the word. And we're going to talk about this, and I want you to read the New Living Translation, something simple, easy to understand. None of the days, the thou's, no, no, no. We're going to keep it simple, okay? And I'm just going to take you through this, and then we're going to go ahead and dive into the specific message on how this applies to you. Let me read it slowly. But please, write that down one more time. First Kings, 18th chapter, 41st verse through 45. It talks about Elijah prays for rain. Stop right there. The prophet Elijah prays for rain. That's right, rain. Okay? It says in the, 31st, in the 41st verse, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go get something to eat and drink, for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. In the 42nd verse, it reads, So Ahab went to eat and drink. But Elijah climbed on top of, the, of Mount Carmel and bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. Verse 43 reads, Then he said to his servant, Go and look out towards the sea. The servant, the servant went and looked, then returned to Elijah and said, I don't see anything. Somebody write that down. I don't see anything. All right? Then, then the servant returned to Elijah and said, I don't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him to go and look. Write that down if you're taking notes. Seven times Elijah told him to go and look. This is the theme of the call. Push until. Seven times Elijah told him to go and look. I'm going to say that one more time. Seven times he told his servant to go back and look. And verse 44 says, finally, finally, the seventh time his servant told him, 
I saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, hurry, to Ahab and tell tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. And I'm going to stop there. Again, the theme of the message is push and till. Elijah was praying for rain. Okay, let's talk about rain. Rain could mean rain means good things. Let's just say it's you're praying for blessings. You whatever the whatever it is you want God to bless you with, you're praying. There you are. You're praying for the marriage, the baby. You're praying for financial restoration. You're praying for a promotion. You're praying for income. You're praying for a business. You're praying for better health. You're praying for God to send you some rain. Are you with me? Do you understand the metaphor in which we're using rain? Well, that's what Elijah was doing. He was praying for rain. And he told his servant to go to the sea and look for some rain. And the servant went and came back each time and said, Master, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. But Elijah wouldn't stop because he was praying. And his faith was strong. And he kept praying. He said, go back again. And the servant would come back again. He would say, I don't see anything. He said, go back seven times. And finally, on the seventh time, he saw a cloud rising about the size of a man's hand. Now think about how small that is. But here's what I want to concentrate on today, because there's so many messages within this message. But what I really want to concentrate on is his persistence to go back until. See, that's, that's the part right there. Write that down. Go back until. And that's why the call is push until. Push until. Push until. Until something happens. See, you're going to have to learn that in this season of your life, this is not God is not Santa Claus. A lot of times we all are worried about it. In other words, we want it, whatever it is, the baby, the relationship, the money, the health. We want it. That's what we want. And God wants us to have it. He does. But do you know that God is more concerned about teaching us the lesson than he is giving us the blessing? Let me say it again. Let me say it again. I need you to write that down. Stop what you're doing. Turn the stove off. Write this down. We are more concerned about it. But God is more concerned about teaching us the lesson versus giving us the blessing. Now, he's going to give you the blessing. That's his promise. You're going to get it. Hello, are you listening? This too shall pass. Whatever you're going through, it's going to pass. You're going to get it. He already paid the price. You're going to get it. Yes, you will. You will get it. I promise you that. It's got to happen. What do you mean? He said it was going to happen. He don't lie. It's a done deal. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. So just go ahead and rest your spirit and know it's going to happen. I know you're screaming, but when, but when, I know that's, that's, that's our flesh talking. We all talk like, I talk like that all the time. It's going to happen. Hello, are you, this is confirmation for you. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. But what I'm trying to say to you, God is trying to teach you. He's trying to teach you a lesson in this season. He's trying to talk to you. Turn the music down so you can hear his voice and hear what he's trying to say. He's trying to teach you something. He's trying to teach you something. One more time. He's trying to teach you something. He's more interested in teaching you the lesson versus giving you the blessing. Because if you get the blessing and you don't understand the lesson, what do you think is going to happen to the blessing? One more time, if he gives you the blessing, but you don't understand the lesson, what do you think is going to happen to the blessing? You won't be able to handle it. I'm reminded of, I won't say any names, but there was a young lady one time, and she, you know, she, she really, 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 I mean, I'd never seen somebody so strong so convicted. I mean, this woman was strong. You know, this young woman, she was so strong and she was so convicted, so convinced that literally she was going to, she said that, you know, she was going to have a black alpha male 
as her husband. And she was absolutely certain, and this is what it was going to be, and she just knew that that's what God told her. And I'm never going to argue with the lady if that's what she said it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. But for some reason, she would get in relationships, and it just it wasn't working out for her. Things just didn't work out for one reason or another. And it never dawned on her. It never dawned on her until years and years and years that maybe the very thing that she really wanted so bad, maybe what she wanted was something that she couldn't handle at that time. Maybe there were some things that needed to shift and change in order for her to pair herself with the very desire that she had. The purpose of the story is oftentimes we want a thing and we wonder why it hasn't happened just yet. God is preparing things. Oftentimes he's preparing you. And I know that that's really hard for some people to receive, but it's absolutely true. If all you got to do is go through Scripture and pay attention to how prophets got prepared, how things would occur, things would happen. And as the Scripture teaches us, all things work together for the good. So what I want you to do, since you're looking for something to do, your job is to push until it happens. You don't stop the pushing. You see, God loves it when we keep pushing and we keep ensuing and we keep just persisting. Write this down. Write this down, and we're going to keep this one short. Persistence beats resistance. I got a friend of mine. This is a funny story, and this is so true. This man, uh, he, he has a wife. I won't say his name and his wife's name, but this dude, he literally, he literally went after his wife 50 times to get this woman, 50 times. Now, look, I'm going to be honest. You know, I, I'm, I'm like Johnny. I'm too, school, I'm too cool for school. I don't know if I'm going to do 50 times. He literally went after this woman 50 times to get her to marry him. He, I mean, it's a true story, true story. He was persistent. Now, look, some of y'all saying, hey, man, that's crazy talk. I ain't going to do that. But this man, he was after this woman, and they still married today. The point, I want you to stay with the point. The point is persistence beats resistance. And his wife tells a story. I love it when she tells it. She says, he just wouldn't stop. He was so determined to have me as his wife. He wouldn't stop. And, 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 he, and he tells it to this day. And I'll be honest, when they tell it, I mean, my, I literally don't know what to say. Because, I, I, mean, I, I mean, obviously they're married. It seems like they're happy and things are great, and that's good, you know. But again, he was just, he's a Rossio, I'm, I'm persistent. I want something, man, I'm all over it. I don't stop. And so I'm talking to my builders out there today. The message is simple, profound, and clear. Push until. Remember the story of Elijah and how he had strong faith. And he said, go back seven times. And next thing you know, a, a, a little cloud about the size of a man's hand began to raise up, and literally, next thing you know, it, it turned out into a full, full hailstorm. started really, really raining, like hailing. And what's the message? What is the message, guys? Number one, persistence. Number, number one, have, let's say number one, have faith. Number two, persistence. And number three, I want to leave you with this. As Elijah told his servant, he said, I hear an abundance of rain coming your way. Go tell Ahab, I hear, come on, somebody, somebody on this call, at the sound of my voice, this is a confirmation message to you of some kind. I don't know what it is, but I'm letting you know, I hear an abundance of rain coming your way. I hope you receive that. I hear an abundance of rain coming your way. I hear it. You may not see it. But I hear it, and I'm going to tell you, push until, push until, push until. I know you get tired. I know your body's getting weak. I know you might be stressed out. Keep pushing. I know you got the babies, and you got this, and you got that, and you got, you got all this stuff going on. You got to keep pushing. Keep pushing. I know it doesn't seem fair. Keep pushing. I know somebody did you dirty. Keep pushing. Somebody lied on you. Keep pushing. Somebody rejected you. Keep pushing. 
Push and tell. I hear an abundance of rain. I hear an abundance of rain coming. Oh! Do you hear it? I hear it. I hear an abundance of rain coming your way. All you got to do is keep pushing until it happens. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the California kid. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. I really hope you uh, go to the server, download this message, find it on YouTube, and listen to it again and again. Dive into that scripture I gave you. Uh, post that thing everywhere. Recite it to yourself for the next 10, 15, 20 days. I promise you it's going to do you good. It's going to do you good because I hear an abundance of rain coming your way. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. everybody.